Howdy, partner. Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. Synthetic division time. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the following problem. Negative 6x cubed plus x squared minus 4. And we're going to divide it then by 2x minus 3. So the first step is we are going to set up a synthetic division table here. And in the top row of the table, we're going to place in the coefficients of your dividend. Okay. Now notice there's something unique about this dividend, that it goes x cubed, x squared, but it looks like we're missing the x term. Okay. You need to have, there's a certain pattern here. You need to have something like this plus then x squared. I'm just copying now plus, how do I know it's a plus? Well, you'll see why it really doesn't make a difference if it's plus or minus. The reason being is because I ac actually have to add a term in here of zero x. Zero times x is what? Obviously it's zero. So I'm just adding zero here. Okay. But what I need to do is I need to visually see that the coefficient of my x term, which is not represented here, is indeed zero. Okay. And then it's a minus four. So now you notice that we have four coefficients, okay? The coefficient of this x squared term, remember, is just a 1 if there's nothing there. So we plug in negative 6. Then we're going to plug in the 1, okay, for the x. Then we're going to plug in the 0. Uh, let me go back. We're going to plug in a 1 for the x squared, okay? Then we're going to plug in a 0 for the x. And then we're going to plug in a negative 4 for the constant. Good. Okay. Let me just get rid of this now. Then we got to work with now our divisor. So what you're going to do in order to figure out what number to plug in here, what you're going to do is you're going to take your divisor and you're going to set it equal to zero. What we're doing is we're going to find the value of X that gives this binomial a value of zero. So you're going to add three to both sides. This is just simple algebra, right? This is going to be two X is going to be equal to three. Divide that by two on both sides. So X is going to work out to be three over two. Now this is the value. I know it's a fraction, but that's the value. We're gonna plug in here, three over two. Sorry, three over two. Okay, so now that we have the complete top row filled out, all we're gonna do now is we're simply going to follow a series of steps. You're gonna take your first term here inside that synthetic division and just drop it straight down. Just write minus six. That's why I have a red box here. Nothing's gonna go there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this value down here, negative six, and multiply it by your uh, three halves. Okay. So you can do that on the side if you like. You can do three over two, and you're going to multiply it then by negative six over one. Remember when you're doing multiplication, you just simply multiply both the numerators and the denominators. So that's going to be negative 18 all over then two, and obviously that simplifies down to just negative nine. So negative nine will be the uh, result you're going to plug into the next adjacent cell here. Okay. So you're going to plug in the negative nine. Make that a little neater, negative nine. All right. And let's just get rid of all this stuff. All right. Now you're going to f add the results of this column together. So that's going to simply come out to be a negative now eight. Cool. Repeat the process. Take this number now and multiply it by that term. So you're going to have three over two multiplied by negative eight over one. And that's going to be negative 24 over two right? And you might see that that's going to work out to be just negative 12. Okay. So that's the value that gets now plugged into here, negative 12. All right. Negative 12. I'll just erase this work. Then what you're going to do is do your addition here. Zero plus negative 12, obviously is just a negative 12. Then you're going to take this result, multiply it by that. Okay. So you're going to have three over two times now negative 12 over one. You can simplify here. You can get rid of the two. That becomes a one. You're getting rid of the 12. That becomes a negative six, right? You're just dividing two out basically. And then three times the negative six is going to be negative 18. Cool. So that's the number that gets plugged in here now, negative 18. Hopefully you're starting to identify the pattern. Now, after that's all done, all you're going to do is just add this column on together and uh, the negative and the negative, you add it together. So it's just going to be negative 22. Okay. Negative 22. So what do each of these now terms represent? Well, the last term here all the way to the right will always represent your remainder. And then these are now going to be the coefficients. Okay. This is your, the coefficient of your constant term. This is then the coefficient of your X term. And this is the coefficient of your X squared term. And if you had more, you know, boxes here, it would have been X cubed and dot, 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 dot. Okay. Now, before you run away and conclude that this is going to be negative six X squared, negative eight X and negative 12, 
you know, minus than 22 over than this divisor, um, there's one other thing we have to do, okay? What we need to do is we need to look at the coefficient of your x term in your divisor. And what we're going to have to do is take this coefficient, whatever it is, could be a 1, right? If it's a 1, you wouldn't even see it. It would just be x. So you can do the same process, although it would be kind of not unnecessary because when you divide stuff by 1, as you'll see, it just kind of cancels. Uh, but whatever this number is, it could be 2 or 2 million. What you're going to do is you're going to take that value, okay? You're going to take that value of 2, and you're going to divide it now into each of these coefficients, not into the remainder though, okay? So just clearing a little space, all we're going to do is we're going to divide each of these now by that coefficient of 2. Okay, great. So what do we get as a result? Well, negative 6 over 2 is simply going to work out to be negative 3. Negative 8 over 2 is going to simply work out to be a negative, negative 4. And then the negative 12 over 2 is simply going to be negative 6. And then your remainder. Okay, I'm going to take care of that in a second. So remember what I said, this term here, this coefficient is the coefficient of your x squared. This is your x, and this is your constant, so there is no x down here, okay? Then take into account your remainder. Whatever the sign is, it becomes a subtraction, just like we were doing here with all those signs, okay? Um, it is a subtraction, and what we're then going to do is take this remainder, whatever it is, whatever it might be, 22 in this case, and you're going to divide it by... We make that a little bigger, 22, and you're going to divide it by your divisor, 2x minus 3. And this down here now, ladies and gentlemen, is indeed your quotient. That's the quotient. That's all there is to it, okay? Now, if you want to check yourself, which I highly recommend you do, what you should do is make up a value for x, choose 0 because it makes your life easy. And plug it in for x everywhere you see it in your dividend, divisor, and quotient. And just consider what we're doing. Remember, we're taking this thing, we're dividing it then by this thing, and that should equal this thing. So when you plug in x, right, this goes bye-bye because it's all multiplied by 0. This goes bye-bye because that's 0. This goes bye-bye because that's 0. This goes bye-bye. This goes bye-bye. And that goes bye-bye. Okay, all of, them, all of them go bye-bye. So what are you left with? You're left with a negative 4 there in the numerator, because I'm going to turn this into kind of a fraction now. Not that you have to, but I think it's easier to view that way. And you can divide it then by the negative 3. And then how now... Sus uh, ha what? My brain just locked up. My brain just locked up. Now it's free. You're going to set it equal to now the result here of the quotient. So it's going to be negative 6... And then this is a negative 22. Sorry, I thought somebody was coming in the room. Negative 22. I think I'm hearing things. Negative 22 all over negative 3. Okay, so this is going to get nice and a little, little crazy here. I'm just going to put a parenthesis here on that. So this works out to be positive now 4 thirds. Okay, and that's going to somehow equal, let's see if this is true. What we're doing is we're checking to see whether this is true. And if it's true, then I know I'm right. So this is a double negative in here, so that's really going to be a positive 22 over 3. Now the issue is that I have to add these two together. I need common denominators, right? So I can put that 6 over 1, and then remember, I'm going to multiply the bottom by 3, and then the top by 3. So what happens now is we got 4 thirds equaling, that's going to be 18 over 3, plus now 22. Oh, sorry, don't forget the negative sign, by the way. Almost forgot that. 22 over 3. All right, and what does this now work out to be? Well, the numerator is negative 18 plus a 22 is a positive 4. Okay, so a positive 4, that is. And then what's the denominator? Ray, and look at that. Lo and behold, beautiful. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. All right, and uh, if you can like and subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. I'd love to help more people. All right, and uh, thank you so much for all the support you've been showing us. By the way, we got thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics, but physics and chemistry as well. We solve specific problems. That's the best way to learn, ladies and gentlemen. So check it out. We'll see you soon.